Howdy, everybody. Here we are all ready to take you down to Pine Ridge for another visit with Lum and Abner. Brought to you by the makers of Horlicks, the original malted milk. With many parts of the country suffering from changeable weather, it is especially important to be on guard against colds and illness at this time. Consult your doctor at the first sign of a cold or sore throat. Don't run the risk of complications, which may develop from lack of proper medical attention. One visit to your doctor may save you weeks of unnecessary suffering. People who are convalescing from colds or more serious illnesses will find Horlick's malted milk just the sort of nourishing, easily digested food drink that will aid recovery. It will not upset or cause distress to a delicate or impaired system. Horlick's is refreshing, invigorating. Its delicious, rich flavor is one that the convalescent will not grow tired of, no matter how regularly Horlick's is included in the diet. Horlick's malted milk is self-contained. Mixed with water alone, it's a nourishing, sustaining food drink. It isn't necessary to add any flavoring or even milk unless desired. You can get Horlick's, you know, either natural or chocolate flavor at your druggist. And now, let's get ready for Lum and Abner. Well, Abner has certainly been having domestic troubles at home. In fact, since his wife Elizabeth returned from her visit in Texas, she has refused to let him come in the house. Well, yesterday, Lum devised a scheme to arouse her sympathy. After bandaging Abner in splints, he called Elizabeth and told her that Abner had been run over by an automobile and had broken both arms. The plan worked. Abner was received at home with open arms and has satisfactorily explained their misunderstanding. Well, as we look in on our old friends today, we find Abner propped up in bed, both arms in splints and bandages, explaining to Dick Huddleston how the accident happened. Listen. Well, I didn't hear a thing about it till this morning. Uh, what time did it happen, Abner? Huh? Oh, uh, uh, yesterday, yesterday. I know, but what time yesterday? Oh, uh, let's see, uh, uh, long late in the afternoon, I believe it was. Mm-hmm. Uh, whose car was it? Who uh, hit you? Why, uh, I don't know who it was. Well, didn't you see the car? Yeah, I reckon I did, but uh, I don't recollect it. You don't know what kind of a car it was, huh? No, no. Why, you know every car in Pine Ridge, Edna. It must have been an out-of-town car. Yeah, yeah, that's it. <laughs> it must have been an out-of-town car. Well, how did it happen, Abner? How come him to hit you? How come who to hit me? Why, the fellow that uh, ran over you. Oh. Why, uh, well, uh, me and Lum was uh, in the store there and... In the store? Well, how could a car hit you and you in the store? Uh, no, no, wait a minute, that's wrong. Yeah. I, I must have been out in front. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, more than likely it started across the street, had not you? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm doing, across the street, yeah. Well, didn't the uh, driver blow his horn to let you know he's coming? Let me see now. He surely did. Yeah, he must have. Uh, then what happened, Dick? I don't know. That's what I'm trying to find out. Oh, sure, yeah, that's right, sure. <laughs> you know less about this accident to have been in it than anybody I ever saw, haven't they? Yeah, I, I do, don't I? I don't recollect much about it. Maybe that uh, lick you got there on the head sort of affected your memory some way. Yeah, 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 that's it, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that lick I got there on my head, that's what done it, sure. Well, uh, didn't the fellow stop? Who? Why, that fellow that hit you. Oh, oh, that, the fellow with the car, yeah. Let me see. Ah. Dick, I, I wish you wouldn't ask me so many questions. Uh, uh, Doc Miller said it ain't good for me to talk too much. Oh, sure, yeah, excuse me, I'm sure. I never thought about that. I was just so interested, you know, in hearing all about it. Well, that's all right. <laughs> I never thought of it neither till just now. I just wanted to get all the particulars, you know. Well, uh, uh, you ask Lom about it. He knows all about it. Uh, fact is, he's the one that thought of, uh, well, uh, he's the one that seen it. Well, then Lom will look after things all right. Well, Abner, I sure hate to see you laid up this way, but accidents will happen, looks like. Yes, they will, looks like. By the way, Abner, are you protected by insurance? A am I what? Are you protected by insurance? Well, now, he can just fix his car up the best way he can. Well, I mean, have you got any accident insurance on yourself? Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah, I've got an accident policy, all right. 
Well, now, that's good. I'm glad to hear that. Times like this is one that will appreciate that in a minute. Yeah, I can tell. You may be laid up here quite a little while, then. Yeah, you can't you tell how bad those I'll things are. in here. Well, that sounds like Grandpappy Spirit out there in the hall. Well, come in, Grandpap. I thought I heard you. Howdy, Abner. Howdy. See, you've got company. Howdy, Richard. How are you, Grandpap? Oh, this period of cat bird. <laughs> well, Abner, they tell me they like to got you yesterday. Yeah, I had a close call, I reckon, Grandpap. Awful close. Here. Uh, uh, go yourself up the rocker there and say it. Yeah, yeah. Get out of there. Get yeah. Well, Abner, I expect I better be getting on back down the store. Uh, sit still, Richard. I'll be going directly myself. Can you stay but just a minute? Just thought I'd grab over and sort of cheer Abner up a little. Why, sure. Sit down, Dick. You ain't got nothing to do, no way. Well, Abner, you look like you've been in a wreck, all right. Yeah. You don't look natural, all bandaged up that way. No, I reckon not. Tell me it broke both your arms. Yeah, yeah, I broke them both, Grandpa. Yeah, I do know. Was your arms broke above or below your elbow? Well, I... Uh, which does it look like to you? Well, of course, just offhand, it looks like it broke below the elbow, I'd say, the way them splints is put on there. Yeah. <laughs> well, you're just right. You sure are. You ought to been a doctor, Grandpa. <laughs> yeah, that's awful bad, Abner. Man, get up your age. He's generally awful slow about mending. Fact is, I doubt where you ever get over it. Oh, why, he'll be up and around in no time at all, Harley Grandpa. I don't know now, Richard. An old man that way, bones don't knit like they ought to. What do you mean, old man? I know when old Uncle Mac Rollins, whenever he fell out of his barn loft over there, he laid that home there for months, flat of his back till he passed on. Well, now, Grandpa, you oughtn't to be scaring Abner that way. It's bad enough as it is. Well, I don't aim to scare you, Abner, now. I hope you do get over it, but I, I just saying, I've got my doubts, got my doubts. Wouldn't surprise me none if you never used them arms again. Yeah, well, you ain't scaring me none, Grandpa. <laughs> I'll be up around again before you know it. That's the time, Abner. That's the way to talk. Well, Abner, tell me about it. Tell me about it. How did it all happen? Who hit you and all that? Uh, Grandpa, uh, Doc Miller told Abner not to be talking too much. Oh. Well, well, now, it's all right for me to talk, but, uh, it, uh, well, it just makes me feel worse to answer questions about the accident. Why, sure it does, Edmer. Best thing to do is just keep it off your mind. Forget about it. Yeah, it must be terrible to think about it. Yeah, must be. Awful bad, awful, awful bad. Yeah, awful. I wouldn't take it too hard, Edmer. Body can't live forever, you know. Uh, somebody at the door there, I think, Edmer. Yeah. Uh, come in, come in. <laughs> well, Edmer, she's working it. Well, howdy, fellas. Howdy, Lom. Yeah, howdy, Lom. Come in, Lom. Come in. Sit down. Yeah, thank now. you. <laughs> You're looking better today, Abner. Glad to see you, yeah, man. Yeah, here, Lom, Lom. Don't be shaking hands with him now. You'll hurt his arm. Oh, excuse me, Abner. I, I forgot. <laughs> well, I did, too. <laughs> here, Lom, take my chair. I've got to be going anyhow. Well, Richard, if you're ready, I believe I better get on back to the place. Yeah, I've got to go too, Grandpa. But Lom's here; he can keep Abner company now. Mm, well, don't let me rush you fellers off now. Well, we're fixing to go anyway, Lom. Uh, Abner, if there's anything you're needing now, just call on us. Any setting up or anything like that? Yeah, us too, Abner. Well, thank you, man. I'm glad you come over. Come back again. Yeah, we will. You come. <laughs> oh, that's right. You can't. I hope you get to feel better, Abner. Uh, you want me to let old Lee in? No, keep that dog out of here. He lays out there in the hall right in the way and tries to get in. Every time you open the door, I'm going to run him off the face. He's going to quit laying out there. <laughs> well, Abner, it's a working, ain't it? Yeah. So far, it is, huh? Uh, so far? I'm still sort of dubious about it, though. You know, the last time we tried this, when we made out like my leg was broke, why, it never worked out so well. Oh, well, uh, we learned a lot that time. Though. Yeah, we ought to learn enough not to try it again, I'm thinking. Oh, well, now, you just leave everything to me, Abner. I'll handle this all right. I hope so. <laughs> yeah, Elizabeth's already in a good humor with you, I can tell that. Yeah. I, I hear her singing back there in the kitchen when I come in just now. Just to sing. <laughs> yeah, well, so far, she appears to be just happy to do it, Bob. And waiting on me, hand and foot. <laughs> Just can't do enough for me, looks like. <laughs> well, I told her yesterday, whenever we carried you over here, she better humor you all she could. She did? <laughs> yeah, you can thank me for all this tension you're well, getting. Well, now, that was a good idea, for she's sure been looking after me. Just been standing right here by my side doing everything. Ask me if I'm comfort and all that. Won't know if I want any more pillars pop behind my head or anything. <laughs> well, that is fine. <laughs> I know it in reason. If I just set my head to do it, I could figure out a way to get Elizabeth back in a good humor with you, all right? Yeah. Well, the only thing that's bothering me now, Lom, with these arms broke, why, I'm going to be laid up there for a long time. It takes them bones a long time to knit, you know. Well, them arms ain't broke. What's the Why? Huh? 
Oh, wait. Uh, <laughs> no, but <laughs> I've got to make out like that. I mean, yeah. and I've got to get out here and make some money somewhere or other. We ain't got nothing to eat in the house and nothing to buy it with. Of course, Dick Huddleston is offered to let us have groceries on the credit, but now, I just ain't going on imposing on him that way when I ain't got no ideas when I can pay it back. No. I was in the store business myself too long. I know just how Dick feels about it. And there ain't going to be no money coming in off in our matrimonial business for a while yet. Well, then it uh, looks like it's a good thing that fella called me up then. What fella? That's just what I come over to tell you about. Huh? Abner, me and you has went into another business. Another business? Yeah, our finance worries is over. Well, what <laughs> kind of business? I ain't telling you a thing about it till I get the whole deal signed up. But you're a half partner in it. Half? Oh, well, now, here now, Long. Now, don't you go making me no partner in something till I find out what it is. You've got me in enough trouble when I know what I'm doing. I ain't going into nothing that I don't know don't about. Don't be telling me what you're going to do and what you ain't. Recollect you got both arms broke there. This ain't no time for you to be arguing back about nothing. All right, Granny, as I said, we're going into a new business, and we're going into it. <laughs> well, Abner seems to be a partner in this new business of lums, whether he likes it or not. Ladies and gentlemen, nothing is more important in keeping good health and maintaining a high resistance to sickness. Then he's plenty of good, sound sleep. That's something we all need to get our share of. Now, a lot of people are troubled with what we call sleeplessness. They can't get to sleep easily at night. As a result, they don't get a full night's rest, only a part of it. Now, those people need more sleep than they are getting. There's something that will help them to get it, too. A cup of Horlicks, hot, just before they go to bed. A cup of Horlicks, just before you retire, relaxes you, soothes you. Helps you to sleep soundly and unbrokenly. Horlicks is an easily digested food. Experiments have proved that it will help you to sleep more restfully than if you had gone to bed with an empty stomach. Drink a cup of Horlicks hot just before you go to bed tonight. You'll find that sleep will come much easier, much quicker. You can get Horlicks malted milk, you know, either natural or chocolate flavor at your druggist. This is Carlton Brickert speaking for Lum and Abner and Horlick, who bid you all good night and good health.